So Fala, tell me a little bit about growing up in Forest Hills and Our Lady Queen of Martyrs Parish, and, and also I believe you went to Lachlan High School. What was that like at the time? In those days, they had about 35 brothers teaching, a little different than now, but uh, I'm still inspired by them. And uh, just last summer, I was down in Jersey and visited uh, three graves of three of them who taught me, who had an influence. Uh, how did you learn about Marinol? When did you first hear about it? Uh, and in those days, Mary Nolders come around and gives talks in the school. My brother, who was two years old, a Tom, uh, heard a talk and got a paper. If you're interested in getting things, you know, hand this. And he wasn't interested, <laughs> so I sent it in. So for about six years, then I would, you know, periodically uh, get notices. And then uh, at the moment, I can't think. Uh, Mary Nolder came to. Uh, give a talk when I was a senior at Bishop Lachlan High School. And I know him well, but I can't think of his name right now. And uh, he had a list of those who had been gone. He said, hey, you've been on our papers for a long time. <laughs> so it's about time you made a decision. Yeah. So at Easter time, I was all set to go to Manhattan College. But at Easter, I went in on our Good Friday to hear Monsignor Fulton Sheen at uh, the cathedral. He always preached the three hours. And I didn't get in because it was jammed, but they had loud speakers in those days out on Fifth Avenue. Um, I don't remember a thing he said, but I have a feeling that somehow that inspired me because then I went away uh, up to Pennsylvania for the following week with a, a classmate, a friend of mine, who later became a Jesuit. And it was up there that on the farm, sitting out on the hillside, that I said, OK, I will be going. Mm -hmm. And so I joined Marinola. That was 1947 at the age of 18. Where were you stationed the longest? I think you said the Philippines? Yes, 18 years yeah. in Mindanao. What kind of work did you do there? Well, in parish work, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I was also a uh, regional superior, so I had a lot of dealing with the other societies and mm -hmm. would go to Manila for that. Mm -hmm. I was just there last year because one high school that I built 52 years ago was destroyed by the earthquake, by a typhoon. typhoon. Mm -hmm. And I've been very encouraged because the graduates have organized themselves to rebuild it, led by the ones that I taught 52 years ago. And now they were 13, 14, and 15. Now they're in their 60s. Mm -hmm. And that inspires me, you know, that they're willing to they realize what they got, and they want to make it for some others. You know. The church seems to be very much alive in the Philippines. Very much alive, yeah. It, our work in Davao, in Mindanao, is one of the most successful, I think, the Marinol any place. Mm -hmm. When we went there in 1956, uh, mm -hmm. there were no Filipino priests where we were trusted in the north. Mm -hmm. uh, now that area has become two dioceses with two Filipino bishops and 150 Filipino priests. I want to just go back to your days at Lachlan and tell me a little bit about uh, you wrote sports and you wrote, uh, you helped the tablet out with the sports out of the Jack Butler. So what do you remember about that? Well, I would send him the scores. Uh, thing. As I said, I was, uh, I wrote sports, got a, what do you call it, a, uh, a major, major letter or whatever we call it in those days for four years. And so I would uh, report, and of course, Lachlan, especially in those days, was a giant in terms of track. Mm -hmm. They had won something like 18 years, the Catholic High School Championship. Mm -hmm. And so there was always a lot of news to report on, on track. And of course, being on the swimming team, I was interested in promoting that, yeah. but particularly. And then uh, they weren't stars in basketball, but basketball and baseball, uh, you know, they played. Those were the, the major sports that we did. So I would send in stories, and, and a lot, we did a lot by telephone, too, yeah, sure. in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Do you stay in touch with Lachlan? Uh, you know, if you do, what do you think of their mission today? Oh, I, I think it's uh, really inspiring, you know, uh, because the situation has radically changed, and they're giving a first-class education. I see the reports of those who get scholarships, and I keep in touch with the brothers. Uh, to my dying day, I will be so grateful to the brothers. I, I haven't been able to attend any of their affairs because I haven't been around at that time. But when I was stationed here, I would go to Lachlan, or something like in October or so for things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Lachlan will always be a, 
an, an, an essential part of me, you know, you know, really so grateful to them, you know.